then this is who I want you to be. Again, I'll take Mother Teresa as an example because I used her earlier. Mother Teresa, this is what I want you to do. So in order to get you there, I'm going to give you these tough experiences. And I know these experiences will be painful. And it's going to hurt you, I believe. It's going to hurt me more. But when I look at this experience, I say the only way for her to get there is that she goes through this. And I'm going to cry more than you cry, but trust me, it's going to work out in the end. And God gave you experiences, the difficult ones. God gave you passions in your heart. God gave you skills because God said the only way that you're going to achieve this dream is that I put you through that kind of stuff. If you are not using your experiences, your gifts, your talents, your skills, your abilities for God's purpose, then you miss the point. We don't know everything there is to know about Judgment Day, but we do know a couple things. And one of the things we know is that we will all stand before God and God will say, I gave you this, and this, and this, and this. What did you do with it? That's what we know. And if your answer is, God, you blessed me, and I used it to buy a really big house. And to have the coolest music on my iPod. And God, look how many people, uh, friends I have on Facebook. And that what you used your skills and abilities you got it all wrong. You got it all wrong. God doesn't bless us to make us rich. God blesses us to use it for His glory. First Peter chapter four verse ten. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Look, I'm be honest. I'm be honest, and don't be upset at me. I'm being honest. Okay? You can be upset at me if I tell a lie. Don't be upset at me if I tell the truth. Truth is, the people that's in this room here today, we are the most blessed people in the whole wide world. We are. But let's be honest. Y'all probably got families that, that didn't work raised in this country with the blessings and the opportunities that we've been given. We're the richest people in the richest country. We are. And there's never been a few of any anthropology people right here. Go study and see across societies, across civilizations, there's never been across the board, a society like us, like an era and a group, a culture, which is as materialistically as blessed as us. And we complain. And we complain. After all we've been given, we all the opportunities, all the education, all the spiritual enrichment that we've been given, we complain. The people in this room here today. Back then you took 12 guys from people who got nothing. They changed the whole wide world. I'm not calling you. I'm calling myself as much as I'm calling you. But if the people in this room here today aren't changing the world, who's going to change the world? If the people in this room... Forget about changing the world. I'll tell you what. Who cares about the world? If the people in this room here today aren't going to change wherever you're from. Baltimore. Seattle. Even Dallas. <laughs> Who's going to change it? Who's going to change Dallas? Who's going to change? Who's going to change this city? If it's not us, who's going to change it? Who's going to bring the light of God to your university or, or your high school or, or, or your job place, your office building? Who's going to do it? If it's not us, who's been given everything? Who's going to do it? What are you waiting for? You waiting for an invitation to come from God, saying, "I want you to do something with your life." There's a person here today who hasn't received gifts and talents and abilities. But I get scared. Let me show you this verse and tell you why I get scared. Romans chapter 12, verse 6 to 8. It says, Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. The prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Ministry, let us use it in ministry. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives in liberality. He who leads for justice. He who shows mercy and cheerfulness. You know that verse is saying? Say, I don't care what you do, man. Just do something. I don't care. I don't care what you do. You got money? Give. You got no money? Teach. You don't know how to teach? Be, uh, 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 use the gift in ministry. You don't know how to minister? Lead. You don't know how to just show mercy? Do something. <laughs> do something. Man, I'm giving you gifts. Man, I've given you abilities. Man, I've blessed you 
going to let anybody else do something. Let me tell you why I'm scared. You, like me, have prayed the following prayer. God bless me. You prayed me. And that's a good prayer. I'm not saying it's a bad. That's a very good prayer. But what I'm saying is this. You ever wonder why you think maybe God isn't blessing you? Like there are times we don't feel God's blessed in our school, in our work, in our home, in our family, in our wife, in our kids. What happens if we don't feel God's blessed in our churches, in our ministry? You ever wonder why? Well, the biblical principle is this. That he who is faithful in what is least is made ruler over much. And the Bible says, to whom he who has, even more will be given. And he who doesn't, even literally has to be taken away. And I used to read that verse and say, that's not fair. What the, what the verse is saying is, if God gives, and this one has, and this one loses, then God is going to give more to this one. Like, that doesn't seem backwards. If God gives blessing, and this one loses his blessing, this one keeps it, God is going to give this guy another one, not give this guy. Like, does that seem unfair? Like, why, where's the welfare? Like, where, where's the equality? I'm paying it to you this way. Like I said, i got two kids. Okay? Let's say I go to both my kids, and I say, Daddy just came home. Daddy's in a generous mood. Five bucks for you. Five bucks for you. Okay? Daddy's really generous today. Let's say, I'll make the girl responsible this time. Okay? The girl takes it. She, of course, daughter of a priest, puts a dollar in the church first. Okay? Pick her up. She takes two dollars, puts it in her piggy bank for her savings, and takes the other two dollars and, you know, buys an air freshener for the house. Whatever. Okay? <laughs> Gives it a gift to me. And the other boy takes his money, goes out on the street, and spends all five dollars for a cup of lemonade from a dumb little girl selling lemonade <laughs> on the street corner. And then next week, I come back with a couple or, more, or five more dollars, and I can only give it to one of the two. Which one do you think I'm going to give the money to? The daughter. The daughter's not even close. Because this guy wasted it. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. This guy's messed up. <laughs> but we're saying another way. This one was faithful when I gave her. She gets more. This one was not faithful. This one gets nothing. Look, this is scary, and I don't know you, so you can't be upset at me. <laughs> Maybe the reason God isn't blessing us is because He already did bless us and we wasted it. Because He already did bless us and we did nothing with it. He did bless us. He did give us. And we did nothing with it. And we sit here and say, God give me more. God give me more. We waste everything that he gives us, and we cry when we're going to tell him, like, God, isn't blessed to be God, please. Please what? Why don't you do something with the blessing I already ate? What I stop doing, stop blaming God if you don't see blessing. Stop blaming God. Stop blaming your circumstances. Stop blaming your mother, your father. Stop blaming things around you. Start to look at what one of our fathers once said, the man in the mirror. Okay. It's Michael Jackson. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Evaluate your abilities. Fourth, and this is something that I'll go through quickly because y'all are doing this. Associate with godly dreamers. What that means is very simple. Look, we are not as strong as we think we are. We think we're strong, we're not. We are a lot more influenceable, influenceable, okay, or easily to be influenced than we realize. Meaning that if you're around, hang out with losers, you're most likely going to be a loser. And if you hang out with winners, you're going to be a winner. If you hang out with people who are godly in their thoughts and in their dreams, then you too will be encouraged in your godly dreams. And if you hang out with people who have no faith and are always negative and say, no, 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 God can't do that, and no, 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 why are you dreaming so big, and no, 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 you hang out with those kind of people, you're going to be one of those kind of people. Proverbs 
Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17, and then 1 Corinthians 15, 33. It says the same thing, but one on the negative side, one on the positive side. First, on the positive side. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Iron sharpens iron, friends encourage one another. Godliness encourages godliness. It's a positive, contagious kind of a thing. But on the flip side, 1 Corinthians 15, 33, not be deceived, evil company corrupts good habits. I can't tell you about the number of times where I have seen a godly dream killed by a set of friends or family. A person comes to my office and he sits and he cries and he's ready and he's ready to dedicate and he's going to give his life to God and God's calling him and he's going to do this. Then he goes home, he talks to his friends and they say, that's dumb. Why, why, why are you be so unrealistic? Sit down and, and he comes back. What happened, boy? You were excited. What happened? Oh, you know, I just started thinking about, you know, God willing, we'll see one day. You know what that is? That's loser talk. Every godly dreamer in the whole wide world had people telling him, you know, this is, we have this area. Do you have this? Okay. This means, you yeah, like, <laughs> not saying, he's like, go slow. Why are you in a rush? Be normal. Be calm. Exactly. You have this? This? Okay. This. Okay. Am I doing it right? No. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. Don't mess me up here. Make me do funny things, okay? You know what I'm trying to say. Someone once said, if you want to soar with the eagles, you can't run with the turkeys. Okay? The same is true in our spiritual life. You want to soar with eagles? You gotta stop hanging around with fat turkeys. I dedicate myself to God. I say, God, I'm all yours. I know that I need that alone time with God, so I reserve that alone time with God. During that alone time, I start to evaluate what God has gifted me with, what passion God has put in my heart, what does God want for my life. I skip away from those ungodly, negative, discouraging people. So I hang around with godly people. And then I take a real step of faith and I make my dream public. What do I mean by make my dream public? I'm not saying call a press conference. I'm saying tell someone. Tell that godly friend. Tell your father of confession, your spiritual God, your mother, your brother, your father, whatever. Tell someone. Because something happens when it comes out of our mouth. It becomes much more real when it comes out of our mouth. Because what happens when it comes out of our mouth, that's our first step of faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. What faith is, is faith is a practical step of Think of it like my dream is like at that ceiling. Alright? That's my dream is at the ceiling. That's what I'm hoping for. Faith is the steps on the ladder. Okay? And according to your faith, let it be to me, according to how many steps up that, how high you're willing to go up, that's what it'll be to you. So that first step of faith is when you go to someone and say, hey, I know this is crazy, but I think God is leading me to this. You know what happened there when you did that? You just went up a step. Because now, there's someone there who could laugh at you. You took a step of faith. There's someone there who would tell you you're an idiot. You took a step of faith. There's someone there who every time you see him, you're going to be reminded of what God told you he wants you to do. When you open your mouth, like Peter, like you know Peter's step of faith, when he walked on the water, wasn't in the walking on the water. It's when he opened his mouth, his big fat mouth, and says, hey, can I do that? Sure, come on. You must have been thinking, yes. <laughs> you opened your mouth, from all your friends, they're going to laugh at you. You opened your mouth, you go for it.